We just upcycled this crazy thrift store find, broken door and all, into this, into this. Beauty and the Beast inspired furniture flip. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. Last week on Kim and Garrett Make It, we found this piece of furniture in a thrift shop. We cleaned it up. We sanded it down. We primed it. And then we gave it this fancy paint job. And now this week, we're going to take it to a whole other level. We're going to add some accents that we cut on the Glowforge and this paint job that we're doing with some Cricut stencils. This was our surprise project. As we mentioned last week, we were planning to build a cabinet. We ended up spending way more than we expected on just the lumber. So we decided to go out and see what else we could find. We found this cabinet, which I think is perfect to showcase our country chic paints. And we've done a little renovation to it. And so this week I'm excited to add those finishing touches. We're gonna put some stripes in here. We're gonna add some diamonds. And then the most exciting part of this is we've got a new idea. We haven't done this before, no. but we're gonna do something new with the Glowforge and add some accents, give this piece some dimension with some Glowforge accents that we're gonna paint gold. Everything we add pretty much yeah. is going to be gold. gold. Well. No, our stencils won't be gold. We're also gonna repaint this trim gold. Yes, this piece started out with some gold trim, which really was part of the inspiration for me of this paint job that we have. So I wanna put that gold back. We didn't have time to do that last week. So, and it really wouldn't go with just this. But once we add the gold, the And the stripe, gold, and the gold, yes. and the gold. And the oh, gold. It's gonna be, it's gonna be blinging. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's gonna be a really cool statement piece. And that's what we're gonna work on today. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We really just needed some vinyl for our stencils. So we needed vinyl and a Cricut to cut the vinyl. And then we're gonna put some quarter inch MDF accents on here. And we're gonna use the Glowforge to cut that quarter inch MDF. And then of course we need our Country Chic paints to add additional accents. Now, I will say, I have to confess, Country Chic has this really great metallic accent cream. And this one is in Pocket Watch, which is their gold. And it's beautiful. I like the name. <laughs> but I used a lot of this over Christmas. I had a lot of gold accents to a lot of signs, and now my pocket watch is empty. Oh no, you don't even know what time it is. I, don't, I, have, I know I'm out of time because Country Chic can't ship paints, metallic accent paints in the winter. So while oh. I mentioned to you guys last time, I do have a brand new order, large order of Country Chic paints if you're interested on its way. I actually got shipped yesterday. <laughs> So, but I don't have the gold in there because I can't, sh they can't ship gold in the winter time. It will freeze. So we have a backup. We went to our local Home Depot and Krylon makes a, what is this called? Gold leaf, brilliant metallic paint in gold leaf. So we're going to use this to add all of our gold accents and we've got a whole quart of it. So yeah, it should be enough to go around. Yeah. Maybe we just paint a bunch of stuff gold again. Well, I'll tell you with this cream, this is not your, this is not a paint. This is a cream. Oh, and it's like it a paste. Is, Yes, it is very thick, and so this goes on beautifully. Yes. Um, so we'll, well just have to see. that's why I see. love the country chic stuff. It's one coat. <laughs> we'll have to see how this Krylon goes on, I'm afraid. It's a little watery. Yeah, Might be doing gold multiple. accents, are, they're gonna be tedious anyway, so I think I'm gonna have to do a couple of coats. This is not gonna be a fun part of this project, but I really think it's gonna add some pop to it. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna make it pop. <laughs> Step two. Ooh. Reapply the gold paint. First T. <laughs> so we're gonna use these tiny brushes and just get started on this trim. Now we paint some stripes. We're gonna put some stripes in the black. Yes, accent time. Now we're gonna use our stencils. Well, for this one, we're gonna use painter's tape. I don't think we need to make a stencil 
just to add a stripe. So we're gonna no. just add some painter's tape and we're gonna add black and white stripes back here. We're gonna use Simplicity by Country Chic. It's a one coat wonder. I'm really hoping this one coat will cover up the blue. I, uh, yeah, you can hope. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be two coats. It's a dark blue, but <laughs> I have faith. Okay. Continuing step three, while this white paint dries, we've put a second coat on here. We're gonna start adding our stencils. We're gonna use our Cricut and we're gonna cut out a diamond shaped pattern for the stencil in the back here. I'm just going to paint gold diamonds back here. So stripes and diamonds. Oh man, golden diamonds. This thing is so blingy. <laughs> All right, so I'll meet you back at the studio where my Cricut is. We have our stencils all ready. This one I actually did out of the Smart Vinyl, which is great, but I ran out of this. I didn't quite have enough because I learned, a little lesson learned, a little trial and error. I needed it to be this way to get the proper width, but of course to cut it on the Cricut, I can only go 11, well with the Maker you can go 11.75 inches wide. So I had to turn my diamond sideways and I cut another sheet out of this green so that it's the proper width and then I have three rows. I'll just keep piecemealing it all the way down. Uh, okay, all right, all right. We've added our stencil. Now we're gonna do this in piecemeal steps because I don't have enough wide or long. So we're gonna do one piece at a time. We're gonna first apply our Mod Podge. We're using the matte Mod, Mod Podge. And we're gonna give that a quick coat so that the paint doesn't bleed. Once it dries, just barely dries, we're gonna go ahead and add our gold paint. Just creating that little barrier. Yes. Well, Kim's finishing up the diamonds, these gold diamonds, they're looking pretty popping. Yep, I love them. I'm gonna go back to the stripes and I'm just gonna do the stripes, the thickness of this painter's tape, but to make sure they're perpendicular, straight up and down, I'm gonna measure in 12 inches from the top and 12 inches from the side to lay down my first piece. And then I'm gonna use a guide piece to do all the other pieces. So how wide is your painter's tape? My painter's tape is like an inch and seven eighths. Seven eighths, so like two inches. <laughs> two inches. <laughs> All right, I'm just pouring some of this licorice on the plate and then I'm gonna roll it on with a roller. I'm not gonna try to use a paintbrush. <laughs> Just to see what we've got. I hope it doesn't peel up the white paint. Gotta do it slow and low. Not bad. I think you need to touch up the white a little bit. Yeah, we got a few white touch ups, but the great thing about this chalk paint is it's easy to sand that down just a little bit and add some more white to it. So we're gonna touch up some of the white spots here. But other than that, I mean, look at it. Look at it. Yeah, looking good. Step four, and now we add the accents. <laughs> this time we're gonna add some dimension. So we've added our stripes, we've added our diamonds. They look great, I'm loving it. But I think the sides need a little something more. So this is where we're gonna start using our Glowforge 
to add some accents. We haven't done this before, but I thought it was a new use for the Glowforge and it would be kind of cool looking. So we're gonna put a rose silhouette on the side here and paint it gold. So how are we gonna do that? So we're gonna jump into Canva find some designs, and then we'll import them into the Glowforge. We're gonna use some quarter inch MDF, but that stuff's expensive right now. Shoo! So we're gonna make some test cuts using a pizza box. I'm gonna use the cardboard from the pizza box and see if we uh, have the right fit before we uh, start making cuts on the expensive MDF. So uh, I'll meet you in Canva. Over at canva.com, I'm gonna find some clip art that's Beauty and the Beast-esque, reminiscent of. I love Canva because they have a lot of clip art, like a ton of clip art. Sometimes it's even hard to find what you're looking for. You just gotta hit those right search terms, those right phrases. Once I find what I'm looking for, I like to download it as an SVG with a transparent background. You can do this if you have a pro account. I don't remember how much that costs. And I like this because I can import it right into Glowforge. It doesn't have a background and doesn't have any crazy frame around it. I let it do its thing. Kim decided she didn't want this top piece. Let's get rid of that. We'll just nix it. Bam. Let's bring everything up so I can see it. Control A. Drag it up. She wanted this piece right here to be 13 inches wide. So let's make it 13 inches wide. Boom, bam. Let's get this out of the way. She wanted this one over here to be a 13 inches tall. So high, 13. Boom, bam. Now let's, let's put an outline around these so that we can cut out a layer and then have a layer for scoring. So I'm gonna create a new outline. Let's bring this down, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, give me like a 16th of an inch, eighth of an inch. All right, looks great. Yeah, looks great. Let's go over here to this one. We'll give this one an outline too, but I'm not gonna layer this one. I'm just gonna bring this down to zero. We'll just make this so it cuts out. But then I have a layer for cutting this one out and then I can score and engrave it. Now for materials, I'm using cardboard. That's an eighth of an inch, so it's 0.118. My settings for cutting cardboard are a 180 speed and 60% power. My cardboard scoring settings are 500 speed, 60% power. I like 60%. Let's position this to cut it out now. Right, we're just gonna tweak it. Oh. All right, we're just gonna tweak it. Oh. But every time I try to t turn it and then let go of the handle, it deselects everything. Oh, that's a pain in the butt. I'm gonna go load the cardboard and we're gonna cut this thing. cardboard cutout pieces to see if they fit. Perfect. I think that's a good size. What do you think about that size? You don't want to take a step back? Yes, let me see. Well, Should you could cut this one yeah. this way. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, can you see it? Can you see the vision? Now we're gonna paint this gold. Well, well, now I'm gonna cut it out of MDF, and then we'll paint it gold. <laughs> Think we can get away with just using cardboard? No, we're All not right. doing that. <laughs> All right, we're back. I layered the little rose. I think it'll make it pop but I think layering the top one would make it too gaudy. Yeah, I think it was gonna be too thick. We did talk about it. It was too, too much. This is thick enough. It comes out to about, it makes this about flush. Yeah, looks good, looks good. All right, we'll paint all these that same gold, and then we're just gonna glue them on. Since we need some new hardware for the front of the drawers, and we kinda wanna make them match the old hardware, I'm gonna paint this board gold and then jump back into Canva, 
find something we can use as a drawer pull, we're gonna then cut and engrave it out of the gold painted MDF. We'll see how it turns out. I'll paint this the same time you paint that. Everything's painted. Now we're just gonna attach it with the star bond glue. It's the thick stuff. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi Blitz! <laughs> We're ready to go. I glued them all together. We're just gonna glue them onto the front. And we talked about screwing them from the back, but they're just a decorative piece and... Yeah, I don't plan to use them as an actual handle pull. So if they ever come off, I'll... Glue I'll, it back on. Yeah, I'll glue it back on. <laughs> yeah. All right, tricky, tricky. Let me stand back and see. All right. Now for the old hardware that came with it, it looks similar. I'm just gonna give it a little roll with the roller that we use to uh, roll the roses. These Rolling the, roses. Yeah, these are the drawer pulls and we wanna put them back on because they kinda, you see they go with the same theme. I like them, but we're just gonna just put a little of that paint mm. on it. Won't hurt my feelings mm. if it comes off eventually. But it just gives them a little brighter look. A little zing. But I don't want it to get into the cracks. I just want to keep it. Yeah, just adding a little shine. There's already a little shine to it. We're just gonna give it shine a little Shine it up, pop. a little shine or shine. Shiny or shine. Yeah, a little shiny or shine. A little. I'll set this one down. I'll hold it. You're getting it on the sides. You don't want that. All right, what do you think? Yeah. All right. Not much different. No, nah, just a little pop. Just a little, just a little something. Step five. Now we're going to clear coat it. We're gonna actually add the clear coat over the whole thing using our country cheek sponge here. The trick with this clear coat is you just wanna make one swipe, let it dry and come back and give it another coat. So this is gonna take a little while. And then I'm gonna use the tough coat for the top of these shelves. There's another shelf that goes in here, this shelf and then two shelves here. I'm gonna add tough coat to those. I might even add tough coat to the front of is these Is that because drawers. they're gonna get more wear and tear? Yes. It needs to be tougher. Oh, wow, <laughs> tough coat. <laughs> some MDF, a bang. It's a whole new shebang. I love it.
I love it. It is exactly what I wanted. It is exactly how I envisioned it would look. And it is perfect to store these paints. Isn't this just the perfect cabinet? I'm so excited. I'm just super excited. I just think it's beautiful. And it was, well, to be honest, this is way fancier than what I could have built, but I still could have been cute. Don't yeah, I don't think we cute. could have done this arch or any of this trim. I mean, the flowers are pretty cool, yeah. but I don't think I could have done like that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I love how it came out. It is definitely fancy. It is definitely the bell of the ball. It yes. came in as a beast and <laughs> left as the bell. Yeah, yeah, very good. Bring yeah. it back. Bringing it back. I'm tying it all She's together. Be walking around here talking to us any minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going to come out of her mouth, but don't listen to her. <laughs> we are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. I don't really have anything to balance here. I can steal one of these drawers. Uh, I, last week's video, someone said you were gonna balance something and I was gonna wait to see if you would do it. Oh, what, big drawer? No. Nope. Should I do the big drawer? Oh, that was easy. That was easy. Whoa. <laughs> What else came out of here that you would balance? Oh, the shelf? Uh-uh. Oh, the door? <laughs> that didn't take him very long. <laughs> here he comes, back in the shot. Balance on it. <laughs> Turn it around so they can see the other side and don't hit the cabinet. Right. Remember, this is what it looked like. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, come out. Yeah, we'll set a table over there. <laughs>